The first thing you notice when you buy a MacBook is how limited the macOS is in terms of personalization. Most people simply change wallpapers or system fonts and call it a day. But there is a huge variety of personalization options to choose from. Today I'll show you 10 apps that will make your macOS look better and make you more productive. The first app will be extremely useful to all who hate clutter. If you're tired of that dock being constantly in place, then you need to install IntelliDoc. Basically, all it does is hide your dock when you drag a window close to it. After you install the app, the icon pops up in the menu bar, from which you can customize the behavior of your dock. By moving a slider, you can specify how close the app window needs to be for the dock to hide. The app is free and has no subscription. By the way, this is not an ad, but I'll leave all the links in the description for you. The second app will not change the look of the system, but it will make you more productive. Self-Control is a free application that stops you from accessing certain websites for some time. If you have problems with concentration and you're constantly interrupting the workflow by opening YouTube, this app will take care of that. To add websites, open the app, click Edit Block List and type in the domain name. Then move a slider to choose the time and click Start Block. The best thing about this app is that you can't override this timer before it finishes. You can close the app, restart your Mac, but until the timer is done, you won't be able to access the website. And no, other browsers also won't work. It may be a little over the top, but for some people such drastic measures are the only thing that works out. Again, the link is in the description. The third app is one of my favorites, all my batteries. I have a lot of Apple devices, a Mac an iPhone, Apple Watch, AirPods, Magic Mouse, iPad. Managing the charge on all of them is a very tedious job. Opening each one to see the charge is not an option. Luckily, all my batteries solves that problem. All you need to do is download this free app from the App Store, download an app on all devices you want to track charge, and add them to a list. I've already done that, but the app's instructions are very clear on what to do. The app has a limitation on the number of devices you can add. By default, you can add up to three devices. Want more? Pay a few dollars. From my experience, I can say that the app works really well. It's fast, responsive and accurate. Another thing I like is how easy it is to set it up. No need to fight system settings or read forums. Just install the app and you're good to go. So if you're like me and want to keep track of all your devices charge, this application is all you need. The next app solves a huge problem with macOS, the absence of an audio mixer. Background Music is, again, a free application that helps you take control over the audio. By default on macOS, you can't adjust volume for separate apps, and during FaceTime it's especially annoying. FaceTime makes the background audio too quiet and you can't turn the volume up, because then the person you're FaceTiming will be screaming in your ears. Background Music is an open source application you have to download from GitHub. Click the link in the description, scroll to releases and choose the .pkg file in assets. After installation you'll get an icon in your menu bar from which you can manually adjust volumes. You can also choose the audio output, but I rarely use that. To me, this application is a game changer that I use frequently. It's totally free, be sure to try it. The next application will be great for everyone who can't live without emojis. Rocket is a free app that helps you type emojis faster. Once you open the app for the first time, you get a window for practice. Each time you want to type an emoji, type colon and the emoji name. It's as simple as that. It works everywhere, in texting apps, in browsers, in emails everywhere. Maybe I am not a frequent emoji user, but when I do use them, I want to do it fast and easy. Now let's rewind a little to fixing macOS. How about an easier way to close applications? If you have a ton of apps opened, closing them one by one can be a cumbersome and tedious job. Open the app, press Command Q, so complicated. With Mission Control Plus, you can close application straight from the Mission Control. This app is paid, unfortunately. But if you know a free application that does the same thing, leave the name in the comments. There is not much to tell about this app, but it is certainly worthy of your attention. Ok, moving on. The next app is called Dropover. It's free and really, really useful. Basically, it makes drag and drop easier. Just select a file and wiggle it. A small pop-up will appear to which you can just drop the file. 
You can switch between folders, add new files to the same stack. It could be photos, videos, links, anything. After you gathered all files, you can take them straight from this window and drop wherever you want. But there is another cool trick. You can upload them to the cloud and get a link for sharing. It's really cool if you want to share a few files in the easy way, without opening Google Drives, creating a folder and dumping files there one by one. Dropover just makes things easy. Plus, you can easily perform various actions with files, like resizing, compressing, etc. I use it and it makes my life so much easier, especially when I'm organizing files for videos. The next application is called Mate. It's a free application that also has a Safari extension. Mate is a fast and easily accessible translator. It is always ready, sitting there in your menu bar. Just open it, choose the languages and start typing. No need to open a separate website, switch between tabs just to translate a few words. Mate does a really good job of translating stuff and it pronounces everything pretty good. For me, it is a perfect tool for fast translation jobs. It comes really handy in emailing, messaging or simply web browsing. It also supports a ton of languages, so you won't have a problem with that. Again, it's totally free. The ninth app is Unite. Unite allows you to turn any website into a deeply customizable app on your Mac. I, for example, watch a lot of Netflix in my spare time. And sometimes the tab just gets lost in a myriad of other tabs. With Unite I can easily create a standalone application just for Netflix. To do that, you just need to open Unite, insert a link to the website, type in the name and choose the logo. Then just click Create Unite Application and you're all set. The app you get is basically a web page that's stripped of all browser-related stuff. Yes, it's not a full-fledged native app. But it's not far from it. I think anyone who needs a special app for certain websites will love Unite. The only problem I see is the price. $25 is a lot for an app. But you know, the convenience is well worth it. The final item on the list is Downy. Downy lets you easily download videos from the web. It is especially useful with YouTube. As you know, YouTube in Safari doesn't have an option to download videos, but I often like to watch something on my many trips, and downloading videos with Downy has been a life-changing thing for me. It's not a free application. $20 is a lot to ask for, but I think here the convenience once again outweighs the cost. Yet if you know a free application that does the same thing, I'll be really really happy to see your suggestions in comments. If you have any apps you want me to look at, the comments are always open. I'll be happy to hear what applications you use that make macOS better. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.